Uh, Stephanie, uh, based on consumer feedback that you've received from the WaterSense program, do you feel that any revisions to the current specifications are called for? Well, thankfully, we haven't gotten any customer feedback that's you know negative about the uh, the WaterSense specification for high efficiency toilets. Um, so the you know my phone has been thankfully silent from irate customers about that specification. So f as far as I know, things are all well and good uh, in the home about with the use of the toilet. Um, just, I mean, when we started the, uh, the water sense specification for HETs, I mean, it was just a few years after the MAP test came into being, and there was only the one study, the one medical study that we based that on. Uh, you know, our specification has been out in the marketplace now for four years, so we would probably like to relook at the science behind that, if there's any better information out there. We've heard a lot more from our manufacturing partners about changes they would like to make in the performance, and we're always happy to hear that they want to up the performance requirements on their own without me having to push. Uh, so I think, you know, we would be interested in looking at ways to improve the, the value for customers because I don't think that you, the average American consumer really understands what a thousand grams of waste clearance means. Um, I don't think they understand that, you know, it's just not something that's ever really going to go in unless you're my son and you're putting stuff in the toilet at random. Uh, so, you know, I think they just don't see like what that's really getting them and they don't understand that for every time you ramp up one side of the specification, you probably are sacrificing something else. And as we decide to go lower, we may want to look at other aspects. I mean, when we issued the HET specification, we did have some people questioning how far the waste carried down the drain line. And we did a little bit of research on that as part of our due diligence, but it's not part of the specification. And there's been a, a lot more discussion about if you go lower in terms of volume of flush, what's going to happen in the drain line, and I think that's just becoming a bigger issue now um, from a technical standpoint. But I think as far as the consumer goes, they, j they have no idea. You raise a good point, though. When you, when you hear from competing manufacturers with suggestions about how you might change the procedure, how do you decide what to change? Uh, what, what, what's the process that you would go through if you were to change it? Well, with all of the uh, water sense specifications, what we've been trying to do over the years is move the process sort of off my desk and into the uh, consensus-based standard setting process. So what we have done with our, say, showerhead specification was that specification was developed with the manufacturers, with consumer groups, with utilities in a consensus-based standard setting process. And it worked really well for us. And I would, I would move the, we would, you know, talk to the powers that be about reopening that process for, for toilets when the time, you know, when the time came and then sit with everybody and sort of negotiate what we wanted to look at and what we thought was important. And, um, and you know, WaterSense tends to contribute a lot of consumer use data, uh, consumer expectation data to that process. And we would sort of take that data and see where we wanted to change the specifications, where we really could feasibly create a test that was meaningful in the marketplace. Uh, and then we would take that information and decide what levels we wanted to set on it and work with the committee about around those levels and what performance test what, what would be. Um, but ultimately, it's, you know, it's the job of our, you know, our marketing team at WaterSense to sort of create how that level is going to be conveyed to the consumer. And from our perspective, we want the consumer to just see the WaterSense label and know that that product conveys performance and efficiency. And they don't have to know all the details of rim washdown and all those other things. They don't have to know any of that. They can just see the label and know that that conveys performance. Okay. Getting back to the consumer, one more question for you, Stephanie. I, um, <coughs> excuse me. If they haven't been speaking in words, they seem to be speaking in action with the amount of WaterSense products they're buying. You mentioned in a conversation I was part of yesterday, just a tremendous growth of market share. Could you elaborate on just the growth you've seen? Well, let's see. When I started uh, with WaterSense 
there and we were looking at the HET specification, I think we counted maybe 20 toilets that might have met what we were thinking of would be the water sense specification for toilets. Uh, today we have about 518 different models of toilet that are labeled. Um, in our first year, I think we sold under 900,000 toilets, and I think last year we sold well over 2 million toilets with the water sense label. And this year, although the numbers aren't out there yet, we've sold significantly more. And I think the trends that we've seen was even though we had a really bad downturn in the economy this year that affected overall sales of plumbing products, green products continue to grow. And so our market share as a percentage of overall plumbing products had really shot up. So consumers weren't necessarily buying, when they were actually making a purchase of a plumbing product, they were looking for a green option to purchase. So we had a big uptick in our total market share this year. Um, so I think, you know, the message we have is that the, the, you know, thanks to the work of all of our partners and our utility partners and our plumbing partners that have sort of gotten behind the label, I think consumers are actually starting to have confidence in the label and to not be afraid to, per to you know, purchase a new toilet that has the water sense label on it. So I think it's been good for the industry and it's been really great for us because uh, when we started the water sense program, most of the other labeling programs that were out there were saying, oh, you, you know, it'll be really hard to get to 10% market share. It might take you five or six years. And I think it took two years for us to meet, to go that, to get to that market share with toilets. And, um, you know, so now it's almost like we've been a victim of our own success and we're going to have to start re-looking at that, those levels again, because we're getting to be such a high percentage of the market. Okay, very good. Thanks, Stephanie. Now, John and Bill have been sitting here patiently for the last 35 minutes or so. Uh, they've heard some ideas and suggestions um, and would like to ask them what they might take into consideration. Uh, Bill, if you could uh, be the first to respond. All right. Um, a lot of conversation will map up here. Could you just explain again what that is? Because I'm <laughs> not familiar with the whole test protocol here. But. Uh, no, I think John and I have talked uh, for some time about adding soiled underwear and needles to the test. And, uh, <laughs> it's just, where do you get that much soiled underwear from? <laughs> yeah. But um, no, th these were all good comments. And, and we find that we get the, the, depending whom we talk to at a, at a uh, manufacturing plant or whatever, we'll get different responses. The marketing people want 1,000 grams or 1,200 grams. The engineering people say that's not a reasonable amount to put in a toilet, cut it down to 350 or 500. And they both make sense depending whom you're listening to because they both have their arguments. Uh, we've heard uh, recommendations of good, better, best, or, or uh, gold, silver, bronze, or what have you. Um, part of the problem there lies in the fact that if you're just better but you're not quite best, but you're just this close, and the other one's just barely best, is that a really fair comparison? So we listen, but nothing seems to just jump out at us as this is the answer. Uh, we could limit it to 500 grams. We would probably have a lot of manufacturers or IAPMO or whomever saying, well, we're gonna test to 1,000 and we'll publish those results anyway. So we don't, even though John and I seem to have some sort of a control on, on MAP, we don't ultimately have the total control on it because other labs can do testing Manufacturers can test in their own lab, publish their own results. The only thing we control is if it's not on our list, then maybe the consumer wouldn't believe it, but if they can, they're certainly free to do it. Um, 